I'm right in the middle of my project of testing a 27.5 trail bike and a 29 trail bike. And the test has taken a little bit of a turn. So the Giant Trance 29, which was the trail bike that I was testing for the 29er, is no longer in my fleet. It has been replaced by a Niner Jet 9 RDO, which is a 29er trail bike, very similar to the Trance 29 in terms of travel. Same travel in the front, 130 and 120 in the back. The Trance had 115, but I consider those about the same. So the Jet 9 is actually a bike that I purchased. I already have two Niner demos in my garage and I didn't want to ask for another one. So I'm investing in this project and I actually purchased the Jet 9. When I get to the end of this test, I'm not keeping both bikes. I'm either going to see if Niner will sell me their demo 27.5 rip or buy one and sell the Jet or send the demo back and keep the Jet 9. So why the Jet 9 now? I want to compare the bikes without really comparing the builds. And the Jet 9 is the four star build, the exact same build that is on the Niner Rip 9 27.5. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why not compare the Rip 9 29 versus the Rip 9 27.5? And I'm going to answer that because it's a very good question. So in this test, I'm trying to decide if my trail bike is going to be a 27.5 and a 29. Like I said in one of my opening videos, for cross country and for enduro, I like 29. Trail bikes, not so much about speed, more about fun. And that's where the lines are a little blurred to me. So I consider a mid-travel 29er like the Jet 9 to be more similar to the RIP 9275 than the 29 and here's why. It's about the ride quality. So with the trail bike, you're not concerned about pure downhill speed like you are an enduro bike. Enduro bikes are made for rough, steep, fast terrain. Whereas a trail bike, you want it to be a little bit more versatile. When I had the RIP 929 in my possession, that bike felt a more enduro than trail. So the 29er wheels of the RIP 929 kind of gave it that more enduro feel. What do I mean by that? Well, enduro bikes kind of give up acceleration and super fast cornering for high speed stability and the ability to really just fly over, uh, you know, steep, rugged terrain. Whereas trail bikes to me feel a little bit lighter. Like I said, they accelerate better. Uh, they get around switchbacks a little bit better. Uh, the wheelbases aren't quite as long. And so when I ride the, the 27.5 version of the RIP 9 and I ride a 29er trail bike, they feel like they're made for about the same type of terrain. Now, the nice thing about the RIP 9 27.5 is you've got a little bit more travel. So when you do get into some more chunky stuff, you've kind of got that travel in reserve. But Again, it feels like these bikes are more similar. Now my current Enduro bike is a Transition Sentinel and I love that bike. I love the way that bike descends. It is a downhill brawler. However, when I'm on cross country trails, even though I like pinning it on the downhills, on the uphills and the flatter stuff, it feels a little sluggish. It's not too bad, but compared to a trail bike, uh, it's not as fast. And the RIP 9 29 version feels a little bit more like that. Now I consider the RIP 9 a little bit closer to the trail side than the tra Transition Sentinel. I just want to throw that out there. The Transition bikes to me are geared a little bit more towards downhill and they, all, both of those bikes just rock the downhills. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this test with the Jet 9. So I'm going to do a first look little video of this bike and tomorrow is the first ride on the bike. So tonight's Friday night. I just got done building up this bike. I'm just going to finish setting up the suspension and this thing is ready to go. I am super stoked to ride this bike. It's a <laughs> bike looks great. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in my first look video, but I just wanted to do this kind of update here of the, uh, the test between the 27.5 and the 29 trail bike. Like I said, it's taking, a little bit of a turn and I think the results are going to be in my mind a little bit more accurate because the wheels, the drivetrain, the brakes, even the saddle and the seat post and the handlebars exactly the same 
on this Jet 9 and 27 Vibe Rip 9. Now I will say it's a little bit of a tall order for this Jet 9 compared to the Rip 9 27 Vibe because I am totally, totally digging that bike. The stiffness of the frame and the suppleness of the suspension on that 27 Vibe, it's like no other bike that I've ridden. Uh, and what's really cool, I'll just throw this in at the, you know, as I wrap up the video. I think it's cool how there are some companies keeping 27.5 alive because I'm telling you, there is no clear winner. Like it's going to come down to personal preference. Uh, you know, I think for cross country, 29 is the clear winner. Trail, it is not like that. And Transition just released the Scout, the updated Scout, which is their 27.5. 140 in the back, 150 in the front, just like the RIP 9. And that is a super sweet bike. So you've got companies like Yeti with the SB140. You've got companies like Niner with the RIP 9 27.5 and then Transition with the Scout. And the fact that they updated the Scout, the fact that Niner really just came out with the 27.5 version of the RIP a few years, about a year ago, tells me that these companies are doing the right thing by keeping 27.5 wheels going. So if you're interested in seeing the Jet 9 in more detail, and I'll talk about the build, go ahead and check out the first look video that I'll upload in another day or two. Uh, like I said, sweet bike, very sweet bike. All right, that'll wrap it up for this kind of update on my 29 versus 27.5 trail bike. Questions or comments, as always, drop those below. And follow me on Instagram at ClintG37 because I'm posting some photos and stories as I get into more of this test. Thanks for watching.